Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Amina and I'd absolutely love it if you could subscribe to my channel to see more from me. I love to rant and ramble and chat and educate you guys about education, <laughs> amongst other things. So if you want to see more from me and you want to join the family which is rapidly growing, uh, then I would love it if you could subscribe. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to proofread your own work. Now this is probably one of the most crucial aspects of writing anything, any bit of writing that you have to do as a student or even just writing an email has to be proofread um, and I actually have my thesis here so this is my <laughs> this is my thesis and it is very thick as you can see um, it is I think it's 200 and yeah 215 pages long and I proofread this. I'm also a professional proofreader. I proofread freelance. I have a small consultancy business where I proofread and I help you guys with getting into universities, um, preparing for your Viva, preparing for interviews, writing CVs, and all the links and all the information is down below. I've never really plugged it in a video, um, but I get requests every single day and that's absolutely amazing. My prices really depend on what it is that you are requesting, so if you're asking for proofreading but just kind of basic, just English proofreading, then that's obviously going to be a bit cheaper than um, really academic proofreading where I kind of change the sentences as well. Um, I recently proofread a poster, proofread cover letters, and a few of you have got into your PhD programs after I proofread your letters. If you guys want to contact me and commission me for any editing or proofreading or anything, um, then I absolutely love that and my email will be down below. So you may not want to hire a proofreader and that's totally okay. I wanted to give you my top, I think I have 11 points, yes. My top 11 points for how to proofread your own work. Before I get into the tips, I just wanted to say that make sure that you leave time to proofread. So if your work is due in on Monday, make sure that you've given yourself at least three to four days to actually proofread. This process can be very monotonous, very boring, very tiresome, cumbersome, but it is I would say one of the most important parts of writing anything. Um, so it really depends on how long your work is. Something like my thesis, I I think I gave it about two weeks to proofread um, because it's quite a large bit. Of so the first thing I do, and this is a very quick automatic thing, is just to run a spell check, a grammar check, just from Word. Make sure that your, your settings are on the language settings that you desire. So obviously I always choose a UK English um, and annoyingly it always goes back to US English. American spellings and British spellings for certain words are very different like S and Z for example internalize um, or organize. It's spelled very differently and if you're submitting work in the UK and it's written in some American spelling, some English spelling and it's not consistent that does look really unprofessional. My second tip that I really think is underrated is to edit backwards. So don't start editing from the introduction and go towards the end and the conclusion. Start from the conclusion and go up towards the beginning. We tend to read the beginning parts lots, all the time. And then what happens is the end starts to become a bit sloppy because by the time you've got there, you're probably quite tired from reading this essay a thousand times. So start from the back, start right at the bottom, edit from there and go up towards the introduction. My third tip is to read out loud, to vocalise your work. It's the number of times, the number of times that I'm sitting with someone, I'm tutoring or I'm helping someone out and I ask them to read the sentence to me out loud and they read it and then they say, oh, there's a mistake. This is after I've asked them to check it two or three times. When I ask them to read it out loud, it shows them their mistake. Just try to give every single word a purpose and say every single word on purpose. I think that really helps to ensure that your sentences make sense. It's very easy to write sentences that don't really make sense and sentences that you wouldn't necessarily say uh, in that structure. So definitely saying it out loud and vocalising your work gives you a nice way of just checking that it makes sense. My fourth tip is to give your work to somebody else. Now this is probably a tip that you've heard before, but definitely give your work to someone else. It could be anyone, it doesn't have to be someone in that field, it can be anybody. Proofreading is less about the content but more about the format and the English and the structure and the sentences and, and, and paragraphs. So giving your work to someone else just allows them to pick out mistakes that you may not have seen yourself. Our brains are so used to filling in the gaps. I'm sure you guys have seen those sentences where the, the letters are all jumbled up. Our brains try to figure things out for us, to help us. The fifth tip that I would say is to print your work out. I usually print mine uh, two pages on one, so just to save paper, especially with this thesis. So with this thesis, I actually printed 
six pages on one, if I'm not mistaken, because you know, it's just not possible otherwise to end up with something that I can, you know, walk around with. But um, I printed them out, I printed it out in different sections. So I did the method section and then I did the introduction and the results, etc. And I kind of edited it as I went along. Putting it on paper means that you can edit on the go. So I used to edit on the tube when I was on my way to university or edit on a plane if I was traveling before, you know, during submission time. Um, or I would, you know, give that work to someone else to edit. It kind of gives me the flexibility to edit wherever. Also, so I find that it's much easier to spot mistakes when it's on paper. Um, on screen, it's very easy to kind of just skim over things. But it's also a nice way of giving yourself a little break from the, from the computer screen. You're not supposed to look at a screen for too many hours in the day, uh, and I think a lot of us do. So just by printing it out, it means that you're still being productive, you're still getting some work done, um, but it just means that you're off screen and you can kind of just focus on this piece of paper instead of the sixth thing I do generally is to look at sentence length now if a sentence is more than I would say two and a half lines I question it and I think especially when you're writing information that's already quite heavy in terms of content you don't want to pack in too many points in one sentence so what I would recommend you to do is any sentence that's more than two and a half or three lines on a, on a, on a word document I would say to cut it in half even if you feel like it's the same point cut it in half um, it does make it easier to read when the sentences are shorter longer sentences generally are quite messy and are also not very concise they're not to the point so the seventh tip I'd give is editing in bulk now I sometimes notice that there are words that are it's misspelt or words that are not capitalized but should be capitalized like company names or names of people or names of reagents maybe something that's just generally capitalized some abbreviations have an uppercase letter and then a lowercase letter um, and I don't necessarily notice that when I'm first writing but I notice it later on and imagine trying to go through a thesis that long and copying and changing every single word of that word it's you're gonna miss something so what I generally tend to do is select control and F, so find a word. I'll select the word that I am looking for and then I would say replace with and then I'll put the correct word there and I'll say replace all. So what that does is it replaces every single word in the document that is a mistake. Now this, it has been a lifesaver for me and I used it so much, just generally. <laughs> I even use it now when I'm writing anything or when I'm marking your work. Um, but I noticed that there's a word that has been not capitalized or not spelled correctly, I just say to myself, the chances are they spelled this incorrectly throughout the thesis or throughout this essay and I correct every single one. The eighth thing I do is check for consistency. You might be told to write with a certain font or certain font size or spacing in between. You see I wanted a spacing of 1.5 in between each line and this helps the, the examiner to write a kind of points or kind of feedback in between. A lot of the time when I proofread your work I always ask you to send me a link to um, either online an online document that has formatting on it or um, some sort of mark scheme and I like to just double check because otherwise it, you know every every university every course has a different formatting expectation so when I do the academic proofreading which is pretty much what all of you guys choose um, I always check the mark scheme and kind of tell you oh, you're missing this out, this needs to be corrected, you know, work on this. The ninth thing I do is check for common mistakes. So common words that are usually spelled wrong, like there and they are, your and you are, it and it is, um, effect and affect. It doesn't matter how great your English is, those words are just misspelled sometimes. Um, I, t I commonly misspell weather and weather with a H. What I do is when I go through the, when I go through and proofread, I just check those words just to make sure that it's okay um, at, throughout the essay, not just in one place. I really make sure to check it properly because that is one mistake that you do not want to do. The tenth thing I do is proofread every single version. So this is something that obviously I, I don't do when I'm proofreading your work because I get the last version, but for you, if you're proofreading your own work, make sure that you proofread every single version. Let's say you were to rewrite a section or a paragraph, proofread the whole thing again. Make sure it makes sense. You've got nothing to lose by proofreading. By checking your work, you're only increasing the probability that you find mistakes and you can improve on them. So I would say check as many times as you can. The only time I'd say not to check is after it's printed. So when I printed this out, so I printed four of these. Each one cost about, I think it was like 35 or 40 pounds. Yeah, very expensive. When I printed this out, I refused to look at it because I knew that as soon as I opened it up, 
I was going to find a mistake. So, and at this point, <laughs> once it's bound, <laughs> it's not going to change and I'm just going to think about it. So I would say there's a point at which you just accept there's no change and just make sure that you've saved a version of the original, you say you keep on saving as you go. The last tip I do is I always check facts, and that's something that you should do diligently. Check your facts, make sure that any figures that you use are correct, make sure that any numbers you you quote are correct, make sure your references are correct as well. The people, the names of the authors should be correct as well. Make sure your abbreviations are correct. Make sure that if you've let's say you've done an experiment and you're using a reagent, make sure that you've given the correct name for the reagent. Work looks sloppy when it's incorrect, when it's inaccurate, um, and when it's not referenced. What I tend to do, and I think this is very useful, and I do this all the time when I'm marking your work, because obviously I don't know everything, I don't know the names of everything, and so what I tend to do is I will go on Google and I'll just search for the names, so let's say it's a law, let's say for example Newton's law, um, for example, and let's say I didn't know whether the N and the L should be capitalised. I just Google it and I look on a few papers, a few published papers, to see what they have done. If they've capitalised it, then I'll capitalise it. If they haven't, then I won't. I know that's going to be correct because Nature Publications, for example, have their own editor, so if their professional editors have written it as a capital, then I know that it's going to be correct and I know it's going to be capitalised. So that's the end of the video. I really hope that you gained some insight on how I proofread and how I'd recommend you guys to proofread. Don't forget that perfection is pretty much impossible. No matter how much I go through my work, there will be probably be a mistake at the end of it, especially something as long as a thesis. Just be okay with 99% perfection. And don't forget to press the like button and like this video if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to hit subscribe to see more from me. I post videos twice a week. Well, I normally do, um, on Mondays and Thursdays at 7, at around 7pm in the evening, um, UK time, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!